Over the last few months, I've been working on my dream office and part of the challenge of building out the office space has been to make most of it out of items that I already have on hand or materials that are reclaimed. And so far, I feel like I've done a pretty good job at that. The walls are made out of reclaimed Douglas fir from a salvage yard. The acoustic foam came from Craigslist. And my Glowforge stand is made out of an old flat file that I had laying around that I upcycled and made look like this. I still need a good bit of furniture in the office. And this week, I'm going to tackle one of my biggest needs right now is I have a bunch of office supplies and no place to put them. I was looking around my shop to see what kind of things that I had, and I realized that I had these eight foot tall bookcases that I took out of the garage when I was doing the storage room. There's a lot of material there, but they're totally the wrong size for the space, which is nothing that a saw and a little bit of elbow grease can't take care of. I mentioned it before in the flat file video, but I wanted to say again that upcycling is a great way to get into woodworking. If you're thinking about trying out the hobby, upcycling is one of those things that is how I learned how furniture is built. And it's a great way to kind of exercise your engineering brain without a lot of intimidation from expensive material. Adaptation is the name of the game when you're working with upcycled and reclaimed furniture. You have to get pretty creative with your fixturing and jigs and how you cut things. A bit of quality time with the track saw yielded a couple of carcasses that I can start my foundation from. To fill in the tops, I used the shelves that came with the bookcase. The only problem is they're undersized because uh, they need to fit inside and uh, not bind. To correct that, I found a thin strip of oak that I could cut down on the bandsaw and glue that onto its edge. I started with wood glue and then added a bit of CA glue to act as a clamp to hold it in place. I also added even a bit of blue tape and this should do the trick. With the CA glue in there, it didn't take long before I could trim off that edge and pull off the tape. To attach the top to the cabinet, I figured I'd keep it simple for myself and go with some pocket hole screws. With that oak strip in there, this panel slipped in really nice. Then I can use my shore foot clamp to hold it into place while I secure the screws. After that, I turned the cabinets on their sides and secured the back panel with some staples. Now I had two perfectly good bookcases. I could have stopped there, but I'm gonna take it a couple steps further. I still had this fur left over from doing the walls and I'm gonna glue it up into some panels I'll use later for the tops and sides. These are Rockler's brand new deluxe bar clamps. I just got these in the shop and I've been excited to give them a go. This is literally the, my first time using them and uh, I just kind of figured them out on the fly. I did, did not read the instructions, uh, but they were pretty intuitive. It took me a minute to figure them out, but what I like about them is that they hold both laterally and vertically. So in other words, you don't need many clamps for this almost six foot long glue up. I only needed these four clamps. One thing that I did discover is that with this half inch material, these clamps are not designed for half inch. They're designed for three quarter inch and more, but I figured out an easy fix. I just took an extra scrap piece of that fur, added some tape so that it doesn't stick to the glue up, and then I could just slide those underneath and use them as spacers, and that seemed to do the trick. 
So this tongue and groove was actually pretty convenient because I just glued up inside of the groove and clamped them together. They do have a little bit of a bead on one side, but the other side is perfectly flat. So it made for a nice panel. With all of the spacers laid out, I can then slide in the top section of the clamp and move down the line and lock them in. As you can see, it puts a lot of pressure on the glue up and I got plenty of squeeze out. So I'm real confident this is super strong. I let the panel set up for a couple hours and then I could glue up the second one. The first one will act as the tabletop and then the second glue up will be the two sides. To turn this cabinet from a bookcase to more of a credenza, I'm gonna be adding a couple of drawers. Again, I'm trying to use material I already had. I had a little bit of Baltic birch, and then I'm gonna use a couple more of those shelves to make the drawer fronts. If you wanna learn more about making drawers in more detail, I put out a drawer making basics video a little while back. I will link it here. These drawers are a little bit unique because I'm doing an integrated front as opposed to a false front just means that there's more measuring involved. <laughs> After I had the grooves established for the bottom, I cut all the pieces down to the correct lengths. I'm for right now cutting the fronts and backs the same length and eventually I'll have to shorten them a little bit, but I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. After that, I can set up a stop block and cut all the sides. There are going to be two drawers, so I need four sides. I went with side mounted slides on this. Honestly, in the 10 inch depth, I couldn't get good under mounted slides. And a lot of slides are back ordered right now. So it's hard to get good ones. These are not good ones. And I'll show you in the end kind of what I think of them. Nevertheless, I had to engineer this drawer around these slides. So I have to inset the dado. This comes back to the fact that I've got an integrated drawer front. So uh, the dado needs to be inset, the thickness of the slide, and then I can shift my stop block over the thickness of the material so I can get that dado. Now, I made a mistake here. This is a very common mistake when you make drawers. When I shifted over for the dado, I didn't take into account the thickness of the blade. And so when I tested it out, it was about a blade thickness too wide. Fortunately, the piece that I was working with was a scrap piece that I was just testing it out on. And so I was able to shift my stop block back over and get it aligned properly. To hone in that dado, I gave the stop block a couple of quick taps with the workpiece, and that was enough to get it into alignment. Once I was happy with the fit, I went around and cut the rest of my parts. With everything cut, I could do a quick dry fit to make sure everything's lining up correctly. So I'm not loving this exposed edge right here. I kind of left it thinking I'd be okay with it, but um, honestly, it looks kind of kind of bad. So I've got an idea of how I can cover it up. A while back, I experimented with taking my pattern plywood and making edge banding out of it. I still have some leftover edge banding. Figured it would be a perfect time to use it to cover up these ugly edges. The only problem is that I milled up these panels to be the correct size, so I had to cut away the material thickness of the pattern plywood. The pattern plywood edge banding that I made for the video was half an inch wide, and the drawer fronts are one inch, so it was a good opportunity to make the diamond pattern in the middle of it using some blue tape as backer.
even though the blue tape was probably plenty to hold this together, I wanted to make sure it stayed nice and flat. So I added on some clamps with uh, some blocks on either end, just as an extra insurance policy. Once the glue was dry, I could trim off the excess again with a pull saw. I have to be really delicate with the pull saw because uh, pattern plywood's pretty fragile at this stage. And if it were to snap, it'd probably kind of snap into the pattern. So I'm not putting much downward pressure at all when I'm cutting. The MVP of this project is blue tape. I used it to protect the surface finish while I was sanding and that worked great. I still needed a bottom panel for my drawers and I decided to just use that cabinet back that I'd torn off earlier. Honestly, there's so much good material that came out of these cabinets that I'm, I may just tear apart the other two and, and save the material. One last thing that I still have to do is cut off that excess that I mentioned earlier on the backs of the drawers. That was easily done on the crosscut sled. And then I was ready for a glue up. This is one of my favorite tricks for cleaning up glue squeeze out. You just take a regular drinking straw, cut off the tip of it at an angle, and then you've got a nice little wedge to go in there. And it kind of accumulates the glue inside of the straw, makes it way easier to clean up so you don't have to use a chisel later. So I'm not super happy right now, <laughs> mostly because I, I've been looking at this thing and, and it's okay. It's just not that interesting and I kind of want it to look cool. So. Uh, I think what's bothering me the most is this drawer front, um, even though I just assembled it. I think that it needs a little something, and I think what I'm actually going to do, I've been trying to preserve this surface finish, but um, I don't love the color of it, so I'm actually going to sand it down, and then I'm going to uh, experiment with some like application of some wood on top of it, see how that looks. I was really nervous to try and sand this surface down. I know that this is oak and stain seeps pretty deep into oak. I also know that this is veneered, so you can easily sand through the veneer. I took my time and fortunately it seemed to come out pretty good. After some time sanding, I thought about what details that I want and came up with the idea of doing this raised bead on the surface of the drawer fronts. This will add a little bit more texture to the cabinet. It'll also add a nice shadow line and mimic some of the details that are already in the office. I applied the molding with some glue and nails and left them a little long so I could trim them later. To get the spacing right, I made some spacer blocks. Once I had the first molding on, I could just switch those spacer blocks up to the top, add another molding, glue that into place, and pull out the spacers. Then I used the straw trick again to clean up any squeeze out. Trimming the ends turned out to be a little tricky because I'm trying to cut all of these at once. I found that if I cut a single one, I had a little bit of tear out, which was easy enough to fix with a little bit of glue and blue tape. But after doing a couple of them, I discovered that the easiest way to do it is to just try and cut all of them at once. That comes out a lot cleaner and the saw is supported a lot better. Now that I was happier with the drawer fronts, I started looking at the cabinets to see what I could do to them. And I realized that they had a full quarter inch edge banding all the way around it. So what I did was I took a table edge bit, rounded it over and gave it a more custom bespoke furniture look. The router can't really get into the corners. So to take care of that, I used a carving knife. With the cabinets upside down, I can start installing the hardware for the drawers. And I like to do this with like 
two spacers. So I've got a one inch spacer underneath the drawer slide and that makes sure that the drawer slides at the right height. And then I also have an eighth inch spacer underneath that, which is basically just a sheet of eighth inch plywood, which is broad enough that I can set the drawer on top of it. So when I screw it into place, this is what establishes the gap at the top of the drawer. So I get that nice eighth inch gap all the way around. It was at this point that I felt like the design was finally coming together, looking like a custom made piece of furniture, even though it started out as a couple extremely simple bookshelves. There's still quite a bit left to do. I need to attach the top and figure out what I'm gonna do for the bottom. So I disassembled the drawers and screwed the top section together, rolled it over on its back and started working on the bottom. I decided to go with a simple toe kick, mostly because I don't want to have to clean under this thing uh, in the office. Uh, there will probably be some sawdust that gets tracked in and I have to vacuum fairly often. So I'm doing sort of a kitchen cabinet style toe kick on this. Real simple, just a bunch of scrap pieces of Baltic birch that I'm screwing in with pocket hole screws. That should be more than enough to hold these two cabinets together. And now I can change gears and start focusing on the tops and sides. I started with sanding up those panels that I glued up in the beginning. I let them sit for a couple days just to see if they might start to warp at all uh, with the you know changing temperatures and stuff like that. Uh, but they, they were pretty stable. They seemed to stay reasonably flat. I cut them down to the right width and then rounded over the front edge of them. This Douglas fir has a beautiful grain to it and I want to show that off by making a waterfall edge. In order to do that, I need to cut some really fine tuned miters. Using my miter cutting sled, I cut the first miter and then I take it over to the cabinet and mark out for my second miter. With that marked out, I'll take a very conservative cut on the opposing edge, line it up, and then use the scrap to see how close I am to getting that miter right. In this case, it was a little long intentionally, and then I can take it over, cut it again, and sneak up on that cut until I get a perfect fit. For the sides, I started by cutting in the middle halfway so that I've got plenty of excess on either end. I cut the miter using some blue tape to make sure I don't get tear out, line it up with that other miter, clamp it onto the surface, and then I can mark my line. So I'm about to do a thing that's gonna get me a lot of hate in the comments. I'm gonna glue this solid wood panel on top of this cabinet. And let me explain why. I am using Rift Sawn half inch Douglas fir, which means that it's cut in a very stable way and it's naturally a very stable wood. I also went through and used Jonathan Katz Moses' calculator. If you haven't seen that, I posted a link down below as, long, as well as a link to his video on wood movement. It is a great video on like, what you need to worry about and what you don't. Essentially, I plugged in the width of the board, the species of the wood, the way that it was cut, and the region that I'm in, and it came up with the result of expansion and contraction over the course of the year of three thirty seconds of an inch. That's not much if you're a metric user, that's about two and a half millimeters, and I don't believe that's enough to break the glue bond here or cause it to warp dramatically over the course of the year. I guess we'll find out. I feel pretty confident about it, but you can let me know in the comments if this is a terrible idea or not. I think it's just fine. Using a glue spreader to make sure I had even glue distribution, I started by gluing on the top. I clamped the front edge to hold it in place, added some calls to the top edge of it, and then followed that up with some Surefoot clamps to hold it all together. I then went across and re-clamped the opposing clamps to hold the calls down. 
After a little bit of time, I waited for it to tack up, removed a couple of the clamps, and then added in the beveled side panels. The easiest way to get this to line up was, again, with blue tape. I used so much blue tape in this project. I borrowed a couple of my long reach clamps from the metal shop and used those to clamp the back edge of the cabinet. They worked great, I just wish I had a couple more of them, but they managed to get the job done. The next day, I was able to remove the clamps and check to see how the bevels turned out. I was really happy to find that they didn't have any gaps and only took a bit of sanding to clean them up. To finish off the toe kick, I was able to use the leftover scrap from ripping the tabletop. All I had to do was cut it to width and length and glue it on. After some light sanding and cleanup, it was time for finish. I'm using the Total Boat Halcyon Clear. This is a water-based finish. I have an entire video covering how to use this finish and get good results. It's the same finish that I used on the walls in the office, so it should match pretty well. It goes on quick, dries quick, and I was able to get five coats on it inside of a day. If I could start this project over again, I probably would have sanded the insides. It bugs me just a little bit. Uh, the color's not quite right. You may not even be able to see that on camera, but that's just me being nitpicky. Other than that, I think it looks great. It's very functional. One thing uh, is that I will link to a different pair of drawer slides. These are kind of terrible, and I've, I found a better pair that I'm actually gonna be swapping those out for. Hopefully this encourages people to try upcycling. You can tell you could customize your furniture a lot and not spend a ton of money by doing this. If you got ideas for those two other bookshelves that I've got in the, in the shop, let me know because they're taking up space and I would love to make a project out of them. I know people have been asking for the desk in here and that is absolutely the next project. Uh, look forward to that build coming up soon. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best and I'll catch you in the next one.